What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brandon Blakeney, a.k.a. Brandon Lee TV. Welcome back to the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. Now, kick back, relax, and come take a ride with me. The week is upon us. The week is upon us, y'all. It's LSU hosting South Carolina. The undefeated number one team in the nation versus the defending national champs. The one we've been waiting on. The regular season matchup is here. It is game week. And both the teams are rolling right now. Coming off blowout wins on both ends. You know what I'm saying? They're looking good. We got Stanford and their coach breaking records, making history. You love to see that. Plus, Caitlin Clark out here running fans over or getting run over. We're going to dissect into it and much, much more. But before we get into all that, Make sure y'all hit that subscribe button for all the latest and the greatest. And join our memberships. We got that exclusive content coming weekly, daily, whenever you need it. Now, <laughs> let's get into it. You are now locked into the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. Here is your host, Brandon Blakeney. Look, man, Caitlin Clark was hooping against Ohio State. She had 45 points. The game went to OT, and they still lost. She had 45, y'all. What else is she to do? Um, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was an L. They lost to a very good Ohio State team. But before we get into the, the matchup, man, we just got to look at this clip. So initially, this was the clip that we saw, right? We saw that, and it was like, Okay, this is ridiculous. That fan just ran into Caitlin Clark. But then this new angle dropped right here. And it's looking like, one, that's a heck of a flop. But two, Caitlin Clark may have actually initiated the contact. This might have been an offensive foul after all. I was just trying to exit the court as quickly as possible, so I started running, and I was absolutely just hammered by somebody trying to run onto the court and basically blindsided and... Um, you know, kind of scary, could have caused a pretty serious injury to me and knocked the win out of me. But um, luckily, my teammates kind of picked me up and got me off the court. So, um, and their AD already came and apologized to me. So I really appreciate that. And, um, you know, this is what comes with the territory. I mean, I'm sure they tried their best to do whatever they could. Obviously, it didn't work, and that's disappointing. But, um, you know, just focus now on the game and, you know, ways we can get better. Oh my goodness, what is going on? Luckily, she's okay. You know what I'm saying? She is the face of women's college basketball right now. The most prized possession. She's racking up the biggest ratings. She just sold for the highest uh, bas like sports card that there's ever been. Like $21,000. The highest sports card for a woman in women's college basketball for any player. That's tough, but I'm just saying. And so she dropped 45 points. And looking at the team breakdown, man, Iowa, Ohio State, both were scoring that rock. Ohio State took it 192. They shot 48.6 from the field, hit 50% of their three-point shots, won the rebounding battle, and forced Iowa into 15 turnovers. Now, we mentioned it. Caitlin Clark, 45-7-3. She had more points than minutes played out there, man. And then you got Hannah Stokey putting in 10 points as well. And you love to see Molly Davis, the veteran out there, getting back to her form. They need more from Gabby Marshall, man. 45 from Caitlin Clark wasn't enough. And we warned it. We talked about this, how it could be a situation where – you know, the supporting cast leaves Caitlin Clark hanging. She got 45, and they still couldn't get it done. Almost half the points, I'm just saying. Ohio State, though, on the other hand. Shout out to Cody, man. 33 points, 12 rebounds. Out there just had a day. They had nothing for her. Iowa's bigs, Iowa's wing, like nobody on the court had anything for her. 12 points as well. One of her biggest games of the season. One of the biggest games of her career right there. Just leading the way for Ohio State. The uh, guard J.C. Sheldon poured in 24 as well. You got Celeste Taylor, the transfer, coming in. 
dropping 10 points. You know, a balanced effort. But Cody, oh my goodness, 33. She really battled and matched Caitlin Clark's energy, man. Straight up. Love to see this win for Ohio State. It's just the morale. This is big. This is my momentum right here. This is 12 versus 5. They beat the number 5 team in the nation in overtime. And it was incredible, man. I don't want that clip of Caitlin Clark to overshadow everything. But, hey, they got beat. She had 45, though, so salute to her. And then on the other spectrum, jumping over to the SEC, we mentioned South Carolina and LSU both had major, major wins. I mean, it was blowouts and statement wins in their part. And they are playing the best basketball of the season on both sides of the basketball, both programs right now, in my opinion, right now. And we're, we're, we've been looking at this matchup for quite some time since probably the before the season started. We've been waiting on this matchup. And now we get to see it live and in action. South Carolina continues to stay undefeated with a big win. And when I say big win, I mean in margin, not necessarily importance, but they all matter. They beat Texas A&M like a drum, 99-64, continuing to blow teams out by 30 points or plus in SEC play. And you just look at it, man, just uh, the domination continues, 67% from the field, it, South Carolina shooting over 50% from three is just straight up unfair to the rest of the nation, man. If they're hitting threes like this consistently like they have been, when March comes around, hey, good night. They continue to dominate the boards, winning the rebounding battle 42-29. to 24 assists spreading that rock out. And it's always a balanced attack, man, honestly. Camila Cardoso gets another double-double, 17 and 13. Chloe Kitts, 13, 10, and 5 in 21 minutes? The way these South Carolina bigs can pass the rock, man, I'm telling you. You look at Tahina Pow Pow, 10 points, 5 assists, continue to run that point guard position. Raven Johnson, 4 assists to add. Shout out to Sanaya Fegan, though, man. 15 points off the bench. Another weapon at 6'3". Just more size that LSU is going to have to deal with. I mean, we just seeing these young players come out of nowhere and get their opportunity, make the most of their opportunities. Fegan been around, but I'm looking more so at Full Wiley. 21 points, 3 assists, 1 rebound. You know what I'm saying? I'm just loving what I'm seeing from them. Just like the, the role players like that have come in that might not get the start, but coming off the bench, when you can bring in players like Fool Wiley and Fegan and Ashlyn Watkins and all these players, man, it's just too much depth. It's too much depth to deal with. I'm just saying. It's just too much, y'all. Just a lot going on, man. And on the defensive side, holding Texas A&M, to 64 points, doing what South Carolina does. Let Angel Reese tell it though, they ready for that smoke. The loss, that stinks. Um, we just want to be better from that, and then coming back home is always great. For the fans, of course, like we feel like it does give us a couple more points, and just being able to be home. Um, of course, we have to focus on Arkansas, which we did today, but of course, the big picture is Thursday, and we're ready for it. LSU coming off a dominant performance of their own, beating Arkansas by 31 points. They shot 48% from the field, 40% from three, but this is the best performance we've seen from those perimeter players, all three, like in the, at the same time, like that three-headed monster we've been waiting to see, that, that 26 assists that we've been waiting to see, the Haley Van Lift that we've been waiting to see, 26 and five, are you kidding me? Easily her best game of the year. Michaela Williams, 21 points. Flage Johnson, 13 points. You know what I'm saying? The perimeter players. You know Angel Reese and Anissa Moro are going to do their thing. You know that's going to happen. You know they're going to get bored. 16 points, 17 boards for Reese. We know that's going to happen. But then I'm looking at Alea Del Rosario. She could be a crucial, crucial X factor against South Carolina, and I think she's going to have to play just by design, just for sheer size. But she has seven points and four rebounds, and she's been getting consistent minutes throughout the season and making the most of them. But this is what you want to see from this starting five. 
We know they're going to rely on this starting five heavy during that South Carolina game, and we're seeing what they can do as they continue to progress, play more games together, build that chemistry. If they can shoot the rock like this against South Carolina, they could get a win. I'm just saying. I'm not saying it's going to happen or it won't happen, but if they play like this, if they shoot the rock like this and get this performance from Flage, Haley Van Litt, and Michaela Williams, if they can get that perimeter performance to match Reese and Morrow and get some defensive presence out of Del Rosario, get some good minutes out of the last tear pole, you know what I'm saying? Some hustle buckets. Hey, LSU could walk out of here with a win. I'm just saying, they could walk out of here with a win. We're going to preview that game later in another video, a little later in the week. But I'm just saying. And then we got to talk about Coach Vanderveer out of Stanford. Making history. Whoo, becoming the all-time winningest coach in college basketball history. That's tough. Coach Vanderveer has 1,203 wins to her name. The GOAT. The all-time winners GOAT. Men or women. I mean, you can't do nothing but just applaud the dedication, the consistency, the perseverance that it takes to accomplish a feat like that. And she's continued to be one of the goats of this game and continue to have an impact for decades and doesn't look like she's slowing down at all because Stanford just beat the 25th team in the nation, Oregon State, to get that 1,203rd win, that record-breaking win. And we're seeing them like the maybe the best bigs duo in the country, man. I'm just saying I just don't know if you're going to find a better front court than Kiki Arafin and Cameron Brink. Now, Brink didn't suit up for this one. So, Arafin held it down. 36 points, 12 rebounds. They got some production from the backcourt as well. Talana, Talana Lopolo, 14 points. Brooke Dimitri poured in another 10. The three double-digit scores. And Stanford moves to eight and 18-2 and two on the year. And I think with uh, the loss for Iowa, Stanford has to move up into that top five. So it'll be interesting to see. But just a, a, a huge, huge, huge accomplishment. Coach Vanderveer will be written in history forever. I don't know if this record will be broken. Uh, maybe Don Staley, you know, if she continues her run and sticks around for the long haul, which, you know, I don't see why she wouldn't. But this is just sensational to see, man. Real talk, sensational, sensational to see. I mentioned last week in a previous video that I think Colorado is the biggest threat as a team to South Carolina, and they picked up a big win over a tough, tough, uh, high-powered, star-powered uh, USC Trojan teams led by Juju Watkins. They held her to 20 points. Colorado continues to be one of the most balanced and high-octane offenses we've seen in the nation thus far. They took the win in a hard-fought battle, 63-59, to to move to an impressive 17-2 to on the year. Like we mentioned, they held Juju Watkins to 20 points. It's crazy you saying held a freshman to 20 points. Like, that is insane to say. Um, you know, but they, they, it's just another, they need more help. They need Raya Marshall to be better. They got to just play better as a team as well. Um, looking at Colorado, Jaquia Miller, the big body down low, 19 points and 12 rebounds. And if she is playing like that next to Von Ley, that is going to be a tough, tough duo. I'm telling you right now, the high scoring guard, uh, Jalen Sherrod. I think she's a lot for All-American, pours in 17. We've seen what she can do. Rita Foreman, the shooter, putting in eight points. Like, just a balanced attack, man. Just you, It could be anybody's night with the Colorado Buffs. You just never know. And the Pac-12 is just unpredictable right now. You got Utah beating USC, USC beating USC, UCLA, Colorado beating USC, vice versa. Like, it's just it's crazy right now. UCLA beating Colorado. Like, it's all, it's all, the, the Pac-12 is all over the place, y'all. 
No, I'm just saying it's crazy right now. So it's just I um I love that conference though, top to bottom. I think that they are arguably the best conference in the nation right now. And all that Pac-12 tournament is gonna be nuts. I don't know who's coming out of there, but they gonna be limping because it's just a dog fight every night right now in the Pac-12. It's crazy. In the ACC, UNC and Notre Dame picked up big wins. UNC continues to roll on with the wins. Deja Kelly with another impressive performance, man, against the 18th ranked Louisville Cardinals. Deja Kelly put up an impressive 23-6 and two. She's been on fire in recent weeks, posting back-to-back just very good games, proving that she is one of the best guards in the nation as well and a potential All-American herself, man. So you love to see that effort from them. And UNC continues to roll on, man. I like this UNC team. I like how they're playing right now. I think they're really coming together. They're finding their stride. They're finding that identity, you know what I'm saying? And, hey, UNC... Watch out for them heels. Notre Dame also continues their win streak, moving to 15-3 and with the road win at Wake Forest. Love to see it, and you know those guards are going to keep doing their thing. Sonia Citron, fresh off scoring 1,000 points, put up 18-4-4. Hannah Hidalgo joined her with 21-4-4. These guards continue to just lead the way for this group. And then you also got KK Bransford, the bigger guard, out there at 5'11", fighting her stride, continuing to just provide whatever this team needs, shot-making, defense, rebounding, she's out there getting it done. Um, so it's exciting to see a lot of headlines, more big games tonight, more big games throughout this week. It's going to be exciting to see, man. I'm excited to see all these big-time matchups going on this week. It's going to be it's going to be a lot more content coming out for y'all, man. I appreciate everybody that's been tuning in, rocking with me. We keeping, we build, we building it brick by brick, y'all. We building it brick by brick, and we here to stay. So y'all make sure to hit that subscribe button for all the latest and the greatest. I'm Brandon Blakeney, your host, a.k.a. Brandon Lee TV. Until next time, hey, I'm out.